reaction to Johnny vs. Castlevania Bloodborne. This is it, the end of Month of Castlevania. Now, for quite a while, the series was only something you can find on Nintendo consoles, but back in 1994, the Sega Genesis finally got its piece of the frustration. So does this month end on a high note? Let's find out. This is my review of Castlevania Bloodlines. To many gamers, it simply could not get any better than Super Castlevania 4 in terms of both gameplay and control. While I certainly agree that the control made the game pretty good, I honestly think it took a step back from Castlevania 3 with the lack of multiple paths and extra characters. Again, I didn't really mind, but I can't help but notice when I look back at the game. Three years after the release of Super Castlevania 4, gamers were introduced to Castlevania Bloodlines, and well, I can what definitely see blood, so the title like makes sense, nigga. I guess. Why? Well, in terms of the story, this chick named Elizabeth Bartley wishes to resurrect her uncle, Count Dracula, where she can bring terror all across Europe. Our heroes this time are two characters, John Morris and Eric Lacard. If you're wondering just where the hell the Belmonts are, well, we're not going to find out until Castlevania Portrait of Ruin for the Nintendo DS, so until then, let's just say Dracula finally returned the bald lawnmower with the Belmonts giving no hard feelings afterwards. As the two, you have to travel all across Europe and put an end to Elizabeth's plan to revive the Dark Prince himself. You choose which character you want to play as before the adventure starts, with no way to switch between the two characters during the adventure. I think it would have been cool if we can switch like you can do in Castlevania 3, but maybe that will make the game too easy. I'm not exactly sure. John Morris may not exactly be a Belmont, but he still wields the Vampire Killer and has the Belmont strut. With enough upgrades, John can actually turn the Vampire Killer into this whip of... Light? Lightning? What the hell is this? If you enter a specific code in the options menu, you can listen to a classic Castlevania tune when you're fully upgraded. If you get hit just once, you lose the fourth upgrade. What is this, the Castlevania Adventure? No way, I didn't review that game yet. John and Eric can also use sub-weapons just like a Belmont, and hell, they can even use enhanced versions of sub-weapons at the cost of more gems, which are this game's equivalent to hearts. I never really use the enhanced attacks, but it's a neat concept altogether. Unfortunately, if there's one thing John and Eric didn't learn from the Belmonts, particularly Simon from Super Castlevania 4, it was control. We're back to the original controls in this game, folks, so that means a stiff jump, no mid-air controls, and knockback. God! Luckily, we can still jump on stairs, and surprisingly enough, we can actually jump while we're on stairs this time, so at least we have that. John also can't whip in all eight directions. Well, kinda. He can't whip straight up, but he can whip in an upwards diagonal direction and straight down while jumping. He can even cling on to ceilings and swim across large pits and hazards. I just find it odd that he added new features and took away others. I don't think anybody complained about the improved control in Super Castlevania 4, so why refer back to the old style? Eric Lacard doesn't have a whip, instead he uses a spear. The Alucard spear. Yep, straight from the pretty boy himself. Unlike John, Eric can actually thrust his spear upwards, making some bosses a total joke, but he can't swing on ceilings or attack diagonally while jumping. Taking a note from Super Mario Bros. 2 USA, Eric can do a super jump by holding down the D-pad long enough. Because of this, Eric can take alternate paths that John himself can't get to. Whoa! Super jump indeed. I can't exactly tell, but I think Eric has just a bit more range with a fully upgraded spear, and he also has the spinning attack, which I find cool but not really useful. In the end, I'm more comfortable with controlling John Morris than I am Eric, but that's probably because I've gotten so used to the whip at this point. Anyway, about the adventure. Instead of just traveling through Transylvania, John and Eric have to travel all across Europe and stop whatever forces of darkness impede their path. It starts off familiar with you traveling through the destroyed remains of Castlevania, but then you're suddenly off to a shrine of Atlantis in Greece, then there's the Tower of Pisa in Italy, the munitions factory in Germany, a palace in France, and finally a castle in England. Damn, these guys really get around, and in such a short amount of time, I wonder just what the hell their method of travel is. <laughs> like, uh, no, I was just asking. Altogether, there's only six levels, like the original Castlevania, but they're all pretty long and come equipped with their own challenges and enemies. Die, zombie! Damn! Holy shit! 
Yep, if there's one thing Castlevania Bloodlines was not afraid to fall off, it was the gore factor. Zombie guts splatter on the floor, harpies lose their heads upon death, and we have this rotting hellhound. God damn, that's gruesome. What was this game rated? G.A. General Audience? Damn! Damn! We were pretty hardcore in the 90s. Yeah, so the game is pretty graphic. I'm guessing Sega wasn't so strict with the no blood policy. Kind of like how they kept the graphic violence intact with their port of Mortal Kombat. Hmm, that's the second time I've brought up Mortal Kombat in these reviews. The game's violence ended up being censored back in Europe. Ironic, I know. There, the game is known as Castlevania The New Generation. It contains a few graphical alterations that make it a bit more child-friendly. I don't know what those alterations are exactly, I've never played it, but I'm sure a quick Google search will hold all the answers. The game as a whole is actually very pretty to look at, and it's filled with all sorts of little details, both neat and nonsensical. I always like this wobbling tower section, and this platforming section always makes me tense. What's the point of this dinosaur skeleton? Where did it come from, and just what the hell was this thing? Ah, uh, what a stellar looking statue. Fuck you, Michelangelo, I'm John Morris. My least favorite level is at the very end. Well, figures the last level would be the hardest, but for some unexplained reason, your vision is distorted. You can make it through just fine as long as you pay attention to your feet, but thanks to those damn Medusa heads, I always end up dying at least once. Moving on, we... Oh, shit. Anti-gravity platforming in my Castlevania? Ugh, I hate shit like this. I hate it in Sonic, and I especially hate it here. Once again, if there's something that eases my frustration in a Castlevania game, though, it's the music. It's definitely more upbeat and energetic than Super Castlevania 4, but to me, I think energetic music works best for Castlevania. I mean, I love Super Castlevania 4's atmospheric pieces, but this is music I could jam to all day. The Genesis style makes it feel a little aged, though, and there are some times I can't help but feel the music and sound effects are belting or just busting out a wet fart. Sorry. The boss fights are pretty <laughs> awesome altogether. We have some familiar faces like Frankenstein's monster and the giant bat of... Sorry, the gargoyle. But this game gives us the giant armor knights, a monster made of nothing but gears, and Mothra. Okay, it's not really Mothra, but you can't help but make the comparison. Death is here once again, but he's no problem. Even easier than a Super Castlevania 4 incarnation. Elizabeth Bartley isn't much of a challenge either. Her Medusa form has an incredibly predictable attack pattern, and the final half of the fight is just you striking her when she teleports across the screen. Yeah, I know she's pretty hard to see, but that's video compression for you. Need to find a way to fix that. Now, even though we stopped Elizabeth, Dracula manages to return anyway, and like Castlevania 3, he also has three forms. Luckily, the entire battle really isn't that hard, but the forms are just weird as fuck. His second form is this... wizard thing, and his last form is this demon with a mouth for a crotch. Yeah, you might want to get that looked at. With one final strike, Dracula distorts into nothingness, and by once again collecting the final red orb, Castlevania Bloodlines is finally concluded. Resurrection of Dracula has been averted. Oh, wait, that's it? Huh, I thought it'd be more than that. Well, that was an easy paycheck. What kind of ending was that? Oh, come on, you have to complete expert mode just to see the real ending? I hate when games do that. I wonder what the easy ending looks like. Damn, we don't even see the castle crumble completely? What assholes. I would show you the ending for beating the game on expert, but the game is already hard enough as it is. Not as hard as Castlevania 3, but in this game, you actually have a limited amount of continues. Use them all up, and it's back to the beginning of the game for oh you. God. There is a password feature, but I always find it a pain in the ass to input. You know, I kind of like yeah, the limited not, continues, guys. Now, even though it doesn't have the control that made Super Castlevania 4 so great, it's still a fun game that has its own merits. The levels are a sight to see, the graphics are colorful, and the soundtrack is catchy as hell. Again, the game still has the classic Castlevania challenge, and honestly, with limited continues, it might turn some of you off. In the end, I still consider Super Castlevania 4 the better game, but I assure you it's only because of its superior control. Personally, I think this game beats Super Castlevania 4 in terms of aesthetics and music, but in this case, it's the control that's the main factor. I'll give Castlevania Bloodlines for the Sega Genesis a 7.5 out of 10. This is a game that should be in any Castlevania fan's collection. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to go out of your way to get a Genesis for it, because as far as I'm aware, this game has never been re-released on any other console. Speaking of which, where's my Castlevania Mega Collection? And that, my friends, is the end of Month of Castlevania. Now, I know there's plenty of other series that we didn't go through yet, like the portable games and Rondo. Let me see what that happens right after this one, the Sonic series.
Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Oh, and like and subscribe to both my channel and to Brothers Hood Extreme.